come the big rig kids, y'all. Are you ready? Let's go. Here come the big rig kids, roll with the big rig kids. The sapphire, the truck take you to such amazing places with the big rig kids. Those helpful big rig kids. See how they give and grow and get to know amazing things. Learn with the big rig kids, and you'll see how it is to have adventure days and hang and play with all your friends. Because the big rig kids know what it is to live the most exciting and inviting life. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Grandma Polly. We have two very exceptional, well, beautiful guests tonight that are going to share some things with us, and we look forward to uh, seeing what they bring to the table. But before we get into that, let's give it up for the grandma that everybody knows and loves. You know her. I know her. Grandma Polly. Give it up for her, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let me apologize. We've been having some technical difficulties trying to get uh, myself and Mr. Gilliard on this line. I apologize for that. I want to welcome you guys. We thank you all for showing up. Um, there is some heavy feedback. Um, I don't know where that noise is coming from, but it's loud. Um, first of all, I gotta read this because it's too much information to, uh, to retain in my head. First of all, let's welcome Mr. Donald Gilliard, business owner of Sweet Marine Gilliard Productions, director, political advisor, Motivational speaker. Mr. Gilliard is a native of Georgetown, South Carolina. He first presented his rendition of God's Trumbull when he was in prison. God's Trombone, seven Negro sermons in verses, was written back in 1927 by James Weldon Johnson. Second of all, Let's welcome the other man of the hour. Also, let's welcome Dr. William, no, I'm sorry, Dr. Herman Gibson, Jr. He has been the pastor of Cedar Grove Missionary Baptist Church for 51 years. He also served as the pastor for my Olive Missionary Baptist Church and previously ran Cedar Grove Baptist Church. Currently serves as the moderator of Williamsburg Missionary Baptist Church Association, Williamsburg Union Number no. One, and he also serves on the executive board of the Baptist State Convention. Y'all, let's give these guys a round of applause. Let's give them an awesome welcome. Mr. Gilliard will be joining us this evening by telephone. And we're going to start with him because Donald has done an awesome job with this play and I'm going to bring him in because he's going to tell us a little bit about this play, how he got started with it, and he's going to announce that the play will be done May 21st of this year. And while you guys are here, we are given three individuals. Three of y'all will be chosen to receive a free ticket to this play. What I need you guys to do right now in the comments section, write hashtag God's trombone and share it. This is going to make you eligible for a free ticket. I need you to do that now, and now we're going to welcome Mr. Gibson first before we bring Donald in. Mr. Gibson, we want to bring you in and let you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in this. Is he... Tonight, and uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. 
Donald Gilliard for uh, making this possible. And, uh, we started to do this in 2019, but the COVID came and uh, upset us, so we had to do some changes. And, Eventually he came back and said, well, let's, let's try it, see what we can do. So that's the reason why we're out here. I'm we're trying to sell some tickets and trying to get some ads out and uh, to make this great trip for So I'm happy to be the Lord calls this New York and I to meet together. Kenny, is this audio coming through yeah. low over there also? Because I could barely hear what he said out there. You guys out there in Facebook world, were you able to hear him? Um, I heard him, but uh, I'm looking through some of the the um comments. Yeah, it's just one person said she couldn't hear him, but that was it. But. Nothing else. Okay. Um, because I really didn't catch any. It was coming and broken. So I hope you guys got it. Um, Kenny, let's bring Donald. He's still on the line. Yes. Don. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Donald. And welcome. Hey, how you all um, doing? Well, wonderful. Delighted to be here. Delighted, 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 and really, really delighted to um, uh, to use this vehicle to honor uh, moderator Herman Gibson, a man who has been pastoring the same churches for over 50 years. I mean, just think about that. I mean, over 50 years. And so we just feel honored uh, that we could use this medium um, to be a blessing of this man of God. This, when James Wilson Johnson wrote God's Come on the 1927, what the, in the preface, what he told us was that he wanted to, to leave a legacy for all black ministers. He thought that the black minister was idle and important in our community, and he wanted to leave a work at the last of lifetime. And here it is, almost a hundred years later, and we are still doing God's trombone. So we really think it's very fitting um, to do it on behalf of Moderator Gibson um, for his contribution. And he's excited about it, and um, we hope the entire community will just get involved, come out. Um, to witness um, and to celebrate the man of God. We've got some wonderful ministers involved, um, and it's going to be it's going to be really really special. Mm -hmm. Note that you mm -hmm. have the display on several times. Can you tell me when you first? What when was the first time you did display? And what drove you to do it? Well, um, the first time I directed the play, actually, I was in college at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And I was working at a school while I was in college as a student teacher there. And, and, and I started working my, you know, I studied theater. And, um, and I decided that I was going to introduce them to God's trombone. And, um, and so we entered the Arkansas State Theater Festival there. And we won first place. And we have small high school. And I, I just fell in love with the work. I thought James Rosen Johnson was masterful in how he put it together. And, um, you know, so that was the very first time. And then, of course, you know, I was in prison. And um, I decided I was directed in prison.
um, some of these guys are very, very talented. And we were able to do that in a prison environment. And, um, and I kept telling friends of mine, I says, man, when I get out, um, I'm going to start a company and we're going to travel doing God's trombones. And, uh, of course they laughed cause you know, I was in there with that light sentence. They didn't think I was going to ever get out, but, um, oh, by the grace of God. And, um, I got out and, um, and, and started, uh, the company doing God's trombones. And so we've done it about 20 times. And, um, and we always do it as a fundraiser to, um, to do some good in the community. That is definitely awesome. Now, Kenny, I'm going to need you to pay attention because right now, I'm going to ask a question, and the first person who puts the answer to that question in the um, comment section will receive that first ticket that we're giving away. And they have to have both parts right, because we gave the answers already. The first question is, what year was God trombone? written in and who was it written by comment in the questions the first person to get that uh, question right we will give one ticket to them to be able to attend this play now I'm going to go back to Dr. Gibson yes I <laughs> know <laughs> I know 51 years, that's a long time to be in the ministry. So that says when I first met you, you've probably been in the ministry for a while, but I was a little girl when I first met you. Your brother was a minister at the congregation that I grew up in, which was Mount Sinai Baptist Church in the Browns Ferry community. When we hear about God's trombone being written for the, the, the black ministers in the, uh, in the industry, how does it make you feel? And has this played any role in your life other than being a sponsor to the play that's coming up. Play was written almost a hundred years. You've been in the industry for fifty-one years. Tell us some about that. Is that question direct to me? Yes. Well, I'm in, I'm very excited to, to be a, to be a part of this, and. Uh, I think black preachers had has come from a long ways and we still have a long ways to go. But uh I think I think every every preacher should come out and and uh experience this this great event. And uh I think it would be a great access to your life. For that evening. Can you repeat that, Renee? Um, to Dr. Gibson, are you going to be one of the ministers on the roster delivering delivering one of those seven sermons that evening? I wish you could, but due to the fact that I'm, you know, they are doing this for me, I, I want to I want to just sit back and enjoy. It. Okay, you gonna sit back yeah. and enjoy it. I I like that. I like that, and also I love your yellow too. I'm, and I didn't even know you was gonna wear yellow tonight. See, we we yeah. got some things going on. <laughs> are you, are you, we have some things going. Say again. He's a sharp dresser. He can dress. Yeah. Sharp dresser. He can dress. Yes. 
I think I think um, Dr. Gibson is a is a larger than life figure, and um, I, I, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Um, what James Weldon Johnson talked about was these tall black preachers with stature, and how when he opens his mouth, he can move an audience and move a congregation to ecstasy. And that's Herman Gibson. That's who he is. And, um, you know, I, I just believe that you give people their flowers while they can smell them. And, and that's why we're doing this. We want him to smell it. We want him to enjoy it. You know, he's almost 80 years old. He drives a Corvette. It's been really, really nice. And, um, um, but when you think of what he has had to go through in 50 years in ministry with our people and what we've had to go through, because we've had to go through a lot. And, and he had to nourish our souls and, and nourish our spirit and, and, and keep us on the right path. He buried a lot of people. He married a lot of people. I mean, he's done a lot in 50 years. And then the church is keeping you for 50 years. You must be done done something right. Because, you know, we get rid of them preachers in a minute. Um, just, <laughs> just the mere longevity. The mere longevity of this man in the ministry. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just really, really phenomenal. It really is. You're right, you know Donald. I mean? Um, you, you spoke some <laughs> truth there. Um, and you're right. That's a long time to have been in the ministry, you know, and still carrying out the ministry. Um, do you care to tell us about some of the people who are on the roster? That's to you, Donald. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we we think we have an all star line of, of ministers. Now we have a young kid who's probably twenty four, twenty five years old who's phenomenal. His name is Trayvon McClary. Uh, Trayvon will be doing the prodigal son sermon. Um, we have uh, Bishop Graham. Bishop Graham uh, will be doing the crucifixion. And we have Bishop Graham's son, uh, Quentin Graham. He will be doing the Judgment Day. We have uh, Reverend Terry Law. And uh, he will be doing Noah Build the Ark. Uh, and we have a female pastor as well. She will be, her name is Miss Sally Lakin, Reverend Sally Lakin out of Columbia. She will be doing the funeral sermon, Go Down Death. And we have Mr. Reverend Fryson that will be doing the creation. And we have Mr. Godwin that will be doing Let My People Go. And then we have uh, Pastor Wilson that will be doing the prayer the, uh, that's very similar to doing a sermon the way James Reverend Johnson I wrote it. Um, so we have just wonderful pastors in it, and um, we hope to make Reverend uh, Dr. Gibson very, very, very proud, and he can sit back with them, because I know he's going to be dressed to the tea, he and his wife. They know you two are going to be dressed to a tea, and, uh, and we just, we just, we, we are really, really excited. So we got, um, we have a 50 member cast. Um, we have a 10 member trombone ensemble and, um, yeah, we, we're going to go back to, we're we going to go to church. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go to church. And right now in this country, we, we, uh, we, 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 we need God more than ever. This is the time right now in this country, right now, um, with the war going on, with the pandemic subsiding in, in this country. Um, we need to come out and, and, and celebrate and celebrate this man of God and give God his, his glory. Awesome. And, you know, you, you mentioned the 50 member cast and when you send the, when you sent the flyer over to me, 
I noticed that the choir was out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Am I correct? Yes, my entire cast is out of is out of Charlotte. But I put the production together. I put that team together from here. I actually, when I put this program together after I got out of prison in 2010, in 2011, I was the guest speaker in Durham, North Carolina for an adoption agency called Another Choice for Black Children. And um, the next morning we were having breakfast there with the board of directors. And they told me they were having problems raising money, you know, funding. And I told them, I said, listen, I'm in a prison, a, a, a program in, in prison called God's Trombones. And, um, you know, I said, that could raise some funds, you know. And so they took it under advisement, and six months later, he called me and said, listen, do you think you can do God's trombones? Well, at that time, I don't have any games, but I have the ability. I said, yeah. I said, but I don't need a choir. And, um, and so they arranged for me to come to North Carolina, and I was able to listen to several choirs. And um, and when I heard this choir, and I'm like, okay, this is the one. And then we saw the trombone players at the wedding, and so we put it all. We kind of we put it all together, and um, and so our first production was in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Halton Theater there, and we did very very well. And um, and then we started um, we started traveling from there. But you see how God worked it out? I mean, God put it all together. Because he'd already told me while I was in prison that we were going to do it, that it was going to happen, and it just manifested in itself, and, and off we went to the races. See that right there? That's awesome. Um, because, you know, I'm all about the children. And to think yeah. you started this, you know, raising money for kids. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's why I admire what you do so much. When it comes down to the children and the community, that's part of my ministry and what a lot of people would call it. But to hear this and how you guys started, man, you just gave me hope on some of the things that I'm working on, you know. And we're going to stop right there for a second, too, because during the time you was talking about these ministers, and I'm not going to make it hard on the people because I don't remember the names either. But the first person who could type in the comment one of the titles of the sermons that will be delivered, they would get that second ticket. Kenny, you keep a track of this? One. Yeah. Okay, um, they would get that second ticket. And don't you guys leave because we have another ticket to give away. Um, we're going to go back to um, Dr. Gibson again. And because yes. you have been in the ministry so long and you have these two churches, you know, that you're over and you're that you're you're overseeing. And you have other programs that you're involved in, too. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but when it comes down to the children, do you have any programs there that you can talk about that's there for the kids? Because we're always looking for places for our children to go. Well, definitely in our association, we have what you call youth, youth ministry. And... Uh, we raise money to take them on trips. We have been to, to uh, I think, Georgia twice to them to see uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, it was so exciting, you know, because they don't, they don't know anything about Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, we, 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 we took them also to out on picnics and uh, we have uh, programs and spiritual services for them and uh, we have classes where they 
being taught concerning different issues. And uh, it, it's just a wonderful thing to get our children involved. And before the pandemic, we've done some great things and, and we still hope to do some more things. The only thing I kind of find out about this, you can't get the support of the parents like you should. And uh, I think I think parents need to become more involved, and uh, to get their children in place where we can teach them, and they can come together and enjoy each other, and learn how to fellowship, and get along with each other. We got we got some money saved up now as soon as this pandemic over, and I pray that it will be soon. We we still gonna do some good things for our young people. You just said something that brought many thoughts to mind. You know, when you said that you guys took the kids to, you know, to the Martin Luther King Center, different places like that. Um, that's a great thing because some of these kids never go anywhere beyond their community and their surroundings. So to get them out and expose them to different things. A lot of times it helps to change their way of thinking and introducing them to something new. When you come back and said, I agree with you 100% on this one. I mean, I, th this is my sermon. Parents need to be involved. Our communities have fallen apart for the lack of involvement from the parents. Don't send your children no. to church. Take them Take to them. church. That's right. Absolutely. Because they're they, they they are they're mimicking you. You know, we we will tell our children, thank God all mine are grown. I'm glad I don't have to deal with them at this in this day and time as little ones. But as parents, we tell our children, do as I say and not what you see. So if I'm sending right. you to church and I'm not yeah. going with you, in my opinion, now the children don't develop that sense of respect for others nor themselves because nine times out of ten when you're sending them by themselves, somebody else has to deal with them. Somebody else has to direct them. Someone else at times may have to discipline them. And now you're upset because somebody checked your child. Amen. Right. Amen. Get involved. Amen. Not only not only in the churches, but in the school too. Don't wait until your child is failing to go to find out what's going on with these kids. Be involved as a community. And the community consists of your churches, your schools, your businesses, all that. So be involved all around. And I know I done That's went right. on a little long about that, but um, Don, y'all can go ahead and jump in and say what y'all got to say. <laughs> you know, you know, you 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 are so you are you are so right. You are so right in terms of our children. And let me hear this little tidbit. The first time I saw God's trombone was when I was in high school. So I, I want to encourage those out there to bring your young adults, your young children to see this production. I was in high school the first time I saw it and was mesmerized. They need to be exposed to this great literary work as well. Mm -hmm. I never seen or <laughs> heard of it until I started talking to you. <laughs> yeah, but you heard of the creation, I'm sure. I never heard God's trombone until I brought you in when we did that interview, what, about six months ago? Yeah, but you've never heard of the the, 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 the creation? No. Oh, okay. I'm just being in, honest in with you. <laughs> in school, we, we had to, we, 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 as a poem called The Creation, and God took the face and he looked around, you know, that's one of us 
sermon's actually in God's struggle. That's why I said that. And sometimes in literature, they have that 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 point. You know, called the creation. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, I, I grew up uh, in the Baptist church from baby until I got married and left home right there in Georgia, <laughs> South Carolina. And I'm being, and that's why <laughs> I told you I'm coming. I'm excited about this place. Now I've met a few people who have seen and heard it. And some of them from right down there in Georgetown, you know, was reaching out to me, telling me what a wonderful play it is. But I have to be honest, I never did. And I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm glad we took it down this road because we're talking about the kids. We know that your tickets are $30. Yeah. Is there, do you guys have anything set up to where if someone decides, okay, I'm going to take a group of kids. Is there like a, a, a packet where they could get a group packet or is each sale $30 for the ticket? Well, the tickets are $30, but if there is a group and they're bringing some kids, I I, I, I don't think it'll be a problem to make some adjustments to the to, to kids because we want them to be exposed to this. And we the really reason do. I'm asking because I know someone out there, I don't know personally, but the people who are watching this, that probably was a thought in their mind. Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll make those adjustments. And before the telecast is over with, we're going to give you uh, my number and stuff if anybody want to get tickets. Um, or if anybody know anybody want to be one of the sponsors. And let, let, me, let, me, let me add this, this as well. We, uh, we have sponsors of this. Uh, we went to the community to the business community and corporate community and ask for sponsors for this event that we're doing for, for Moderator Gibson. And we had tremendous uh, support. Um, the Parham Law Firm out of Florence and they opened up a new office in Georgetown is one of our corporate sponsors. Senator Ronnie Fab is one of our sponsors. Um, Supervisor Tiffany Cook in Wayne County is a sponsor. Um... Um, there's the other sponsor, Senator Malloy, Bakari Sellers is a sponsor. Um, my financial advisor, Wildlands Investments is a sponsor. Um, many other sponsors, I'm sure I've missed some of them, but, um, you know, um, the law firm out of Myrtle Beach is a sponsor. Um, yeah, we went out to the business community and we simply asked them, listen, you know, help us. We're celebrating this, this great man, and it, it's a it's a worthy production uh, for the community, and um, you know, and and they've all signed on to help. Because anytime you have a cast of fifty people coming in, we're coming in the chartered bus and hotels and everything. So there are expenses in doing the protection, but we we're able to raise that um, through sponsorship and make sure that um, that we have. Um, a uh, significant uh, uh, financial contribution for Dr. Gibson. We want him. We want him to go to Hawaii or something. So we're gonna make it happen. What's up? That, 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 that. Go to Hawaii. What's up? Say it again, Donald. I don't think he heard you. I said, Doc, y'all ready to go to Hawaii, you uh, sister? Lee? I don't know, I'm afraid I might stay when I go. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we don't want you to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need to continue nice. to come back here. That would be very yeah, nice. we want to be You know, and, uh, and, and, and Renee, that, that's yes. the preachers, they don't have any they don't have any, any retirement benefits. You know, they, they, they don't have that. Um, like some of the other churches, there's a retirement plan where even if they leave the pulpit, there's a check coming to them every month. They don't need that. You know? And um, so this man dedicated his entire life to us, to this community. And he won't have any retirement. So anything that we could do to bless him, then I think we ought to do it. 
I, I, I hear you and I understand that. I didn't know that either, but I want to ask you, um, I was thinking of this question while you were speaking, and I hope it didn't leave my mind. Oh, yeah, you mentioned the fact that you do this as fundraisers. So if someone <laughs> decided they wanted to bring it to their town, what is the process for them? Well, the process, they would simply just contact me and then we'll discuss the, the, the logistics of it and um, and put it together. I've done this for the uh, AKAs in Bennettsville, South Carolina. Of course, you know, I've done it for an adoption agency and so on. Um, I've done it for, for uh, St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church in Salters, a small church of about 20 people. Um, I've done it there. Um, I've done it at the Lighthouse of Jesus Christ Church in Georgetown. Um, I've, um, we've, 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 I've done it at Chesterfield Missionary Baptist Church in the Longs community. Um, for an enrichment center that they were doing for youth. They were building an enrichment center. We did it as a fundraiser for them. Um, so we've, we've, um, you know, we you know, and, and, you know, it has to be something positive. Um, for us to make the sacrifice to come and to do it because there is no major profit in it for us. We enjoy doing it. it, it it's, a, it's a labor of love for us, um, and we're only going to be connected to keep it on something about something good and positive. Okay, that's cool, Kenny. Anybody have any questions in the comments? Uh, no questions yet. Mm -mm. Okay, and you do know the same person can't win all the tickets, right? Yes. Okay, who are those first two winners? You got to tell them the answers. Oh, 1927. Right, James Weldon. Yes. And what's the second answer? They had to give a name of one of the sermons. What was the sermon in... Um, Cause it's seven of them. They only had to name one. Okay. Who, who was that? Who was the? What was the answer the first person gave? The first person. Noah's arch. Noah's ark. Arch. arch. Yeah. Okay. Noah's arch. arch. Who are those? Two? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that it? Who are those two people? Uh, it's just one. And one person gave the answer both times? No, Tanja won the first one. Tanja McNair. Okay, and who won the second one? Uh, Carol Simmons. Carol be on it. <laughs> 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 so, Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Donald, you know what? I asked two questions. I'm going to let one of y'all ask that third question. Who want to ask that question? Um, Dr. Gibson or, uh, or Mr. Donald? Who want to ask the question? And that's for that third ticket. Okay. Ask them, does anybody know the name of the funeral sermon in God's Trombones? I heard the, name that, of that the name of the funeral sermon and God's trombone. Yes. The first person to answer that correctly will get this last ticket that we're giving away. And while we're waiting on answers, um, we're going to go back to Dr. Gibson and we're going to have him give his, uh, have you wrap it up for yourself, Dr. Gibson. Then we're going to go back to Mr. Donald. Anything you want to say to the people, your final words? Uh, yes. Uh, again, I want to say I'm happy to um, be on this uh, Facebook tonight and we definitely inviting everybody to come. And we ask that you please purchase a ticket and uh, you can get your family. You can buy an ad for your family. And uh, 
and we want to make this a, a great success. And I don't know when uh, Brother Gilliard coming back to King Street. I don't know where he's going next, but I think we need to take advantage of this opportunity that we have now to come down to the Chapman Center on the 21st of March. Uh, uh, I think Brother Gilliard said he's going to give out a phone number where you can call him and get some tickets. Gilliard, you got my phone number too. Put that one out there also. And uh, if anybody wants to come, we'd be glad to give them that, that ticket. But I'm so happy to be here and uh, I definitely enjoy being here tonight. Thank you. It's great seeing you again after all of those many, many, many years. Um, I have a question, though. You said that they can buy family ads. Um, if a person owns a business, are they able to purchase a business ad also? Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have several businesses. And we're going to have a beautiful Vermeer booklet. We're going to do the thing first class. Um, you know, we're going to have a remarkable souvenir book to be able to take home. And um, because this is a, just a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful um, occasion. It really is. Okay. All right. You want me? To, you want I'm to, looking you want forward. Me to, my final words? Yeah. Say again, Donald. Yeah. I um, again, Renee, as always, thank you so much. Um, you and Brother Kenny do a wonderful job um, spreading um, goodwill in this community. And like we've always said that, um, you know, we always want to just do what we can to, to make everything in this world better. You have a contribution. We want to make it better. We want to make a contribution to do it better. Um, but if anybody is interested in a ticket or want to sponsor an ad in the Sylvania booklet, um, they can call my number at 843-240-0432. Or they could call moderator Gibson at 803-968-0000. My way to get you is 803-968-0026. And my number is 843-240-0432. So thank you all very much. We're going to have a press conference on Monday at 11 o'clock right there uh, at the City Hall there in King Street. And uh, we're just excited, and thank you all, and maybe you all can call your friends and you can come out and um, but this, this wonderful, wonderful occasion. You know, it's funny. Um, when people die, you know, I mean, it caused me all that to get in the church. We came in to celebrate somebody who's gone on. Well, he's living. Let's do it now. Let's 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 bring that joy and that appreciation now while he's living. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for allowing us to come on. And Renee, Kenny, you're coming down to see it as well? Yes, sir. Okay. So Kenny will be coming down from Atlanta and Renee from Atlanta. And um we just decided we're gonna try to wait for Roll the red carpet out to you all, and um, and 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 really try to have some hospitality and just enjoy this wonderful evening. Um, um, and we appreciate you too, Donald. Um, we appreciate the things that you do. Uh, I love the example that you give. You know, after serving time in prison, I often look at life. I say people make mistakes. And yes, accountability is important. 
but it's not the mistakes that you made. It's what you do with once you get through the trials and the tribulations of it all and how you bounce back from it and redeem yourself. I really do believe in redemption. And it's important to let our children know that, yes, you're going to make mistakes in life. And it may not be the mistake that Donald made. Because there are so many things out there and they're faced with all types of temptation today. But we know that if you fall, you can get back up, but you have to want it. You can't wallow in it. Get back up. In the mud, get up and get to go. Yes. I was just thinking about the very first time I did God's trombones in Charlotte. I had an uh-huh. ankle brace on. I had to get permission from the federal probation officer to allow me to go to another state. And so here I am with this suit on doing God's trombones the first time because I was only out about a year. And I had an ankle brace on under my suit. You know? Uh-huh. And look at God. I, I won't yeah. have one on May 21st. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, look at God, my buddy. That's what I'm saying. Look at God. He could do it. I mean... And we have to be willing. I was having this conversation with a young lady today. When God give us assignments, we have to be willing to work through them because he gave all of us an assignment. My assignment may not be yours or Dr. Gibson's or somebody else's. But once we receive that assignment and we recognize what it is, it's up to us whether we follow through with it. And Yes. Once we step out on it, forget what man says. Because it's all about God when he's in the midst of it. All about God. You know, I may not be standing from a platform in front of a church or even on one of the highest mountains out there. But people call me all the time. Sometimes my husband says, I don't know why people call you all the time. But I'm one of these people who tell people the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Amen. Amen. You know. Yeah. And that's how I help people through conversations in my writings. And we all have a ministry. And it does not necessarily have to be something from a pulpit in a um, church. Amen. That's right. Off in the highest oh, mountain. Really? We all have a calling. So I said all that to say this. And I'm going to let you guys say something about Did anybody answer that question, Kenny? We have a... Tell me tell me the answer. What's the answer, the name Donald? Of the, uh, the, the name of the funeral sermon in God's trumpet. What is the answer? From you, Donald, we need to know the answer. Go down death. <laughs> well, go down death. Did anybody answer that, Kenny? Uh, yeah. Who was the winner? Say he, again. Can they win two tickets or what? But she got it no, right. No, they can't win okay. two tickets. Okay, but she got I it right. So I, I give her some applause. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to make so this one that? easy. Huh? Who was that? Carol? Tanja. 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 Oh, Tanja. Yeah. You know what? I'm sorry. No, I can't do it. I got to stick to what I was going to say. I, I When I first announced that, I said they could only win one ticket per household. So I'm going to stick to that. But Tanja's coming all the way out of Orlando, Florida. Well, if Tanja's actually going to come, she can get two tickets. Tanja, you heard? Because when I told her about it, she was excited. She was like, I got to go. No, she can get two tickets. We'll take it. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you one more question, and I'm gonna make this one easy. So Donald, that we get, we got four tickets. All right, all right, four tickets. Um, how long has Doctor Gibson been in the ministry? 
We said that too. How many years? Mm-hmm. And Tanja and Carol do not answer. <laughs> I know Carol laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not Orlando. She's coming from Tampa. Yes, Tanja's coming. Wonderful. Anybody put it in there yet, Kenny? Uh, yeah. Oh, everybody blowing it up now. That was the easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Who got it, Kenny? Okay, based on the rules. 51 years. Yeah. Reese. Who? Reese. Reese? But Carol answered it first, though. So. Carol, ain't I tell you stop <laughs> typing in that comment box? <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. No, Carol. No. That's my number one fan right there, y'all. Carol is always the first one to show up. Carol, you got your ticket. So Reese was the first one to answer it. Um... We'll see what we do with that. Uh, Reese, you got that ticket. All right. So you guys could give your closing statements. I'm apologizing again for the technical, the technicalities that we had tonight. It's all right. No, I'm, I'm great, Dr. Gibson. Go ahead, Dr. Gibson. Well, again, I want to say, you know, I'm grateful for everything, and it's nice meeting meeting y'all. And uh, I really, I'm really excited about this trombone. I, I really am. And I'm asking all my friends, all my loved ones across the country to purchase a ticket and meet us there. And uh, as uh, Gary y'all said, let's have church. That's what it's yeah. about is have church of you. I know you're going to enjoy it. I think I looked at it just once, and, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's going to be, I, I know, I know, I know some of you think $30 for a ticket is, is too much, but don't, don't feel that way. If you give, God will give to you. And, uh, Purchase a ticket and come on out and that's fellowship. That's a part of ministry too, is fellowship. And come on out and let's fellowship and let's enjoy each other and uh and and be and be happy in the Lord. So bless all of you out there and, and uh, we pray that the blessings of God will continue to fall upon you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Like I said, my, my grandmama used to say, you look like new money. It's been a long time since I've seen you, but it's, <laughs> it's great seeing you. Donald, we're going to let you give your finals. Yes, thank you. Thank you again. Um, everybody come out of you've never seen God's trombones. You will really, really love it. I mean, it's just, it's lively. You're not going to fall asleep in God's trombone. A lot of action, lively, the trombone playing and a great choir and, and the teachers, they all, now these sermons are already written, but they all bring their own style in terms of how they deliver it. So you see the diversity in the black creatures. It's just a fun night. And those who come out, you, you know, we, 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 we think you, you, it's no different if you went to New York to, 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 to see it. It's, it, we, we try to do a professional rendition of this work, and um, and, and let's celebrate this, this this wonderful man of God. Let's let's really really celebrate him. Thank you all so so much, and we're looking forward to this, and uh, we're excited. So call all your friends and those who are not from South Carolina, come on down to South Carolina and enjoy this evening because you won't regret it. Thank you so much. I want to thank everybody for joining this evening. I appreciate you guys for coming in and supporting Conversations with Grandma Polly. 
I thank you guys for supporting me through my big rig kit. Um, for those of you who are on Facebook and you have family and friends who are not on Facebook that weren't who and they weren't able to see this. This will go up on YouTube also later tonight. So we will share it. I will send it to um, Dr. Gibson and I will send it to Donald. And that y'all will have to share, you know, with um, your friends who weren't able to see this live. Uh, so that's another piece right. that you guys get out of this. I appreciate you all so much. I appreciate the great work that you're doing in the communities. And um, I got some things coming up my sleeve too, and I'm gonna be calling on y'all to say, hey, you know, come on, help support this because we, as a people, we need to support each other. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Yes. Any final words, Kenny? Because you've been quiet tonight. Yeah, because it's about y'all. It's not about me. I'm just behind the scenes. <laughs> you but I do thank you, thank you so much, uh, D Donald. Uh, Mr. Gilliard and, and Pastor Gibson for taking time out of your day, out of your evening when you could have been anywhere else, but you're shedding light and, and spreading hope through uh, through this channel. And we truly, truly, truly appreciate that and look forward to seeing you in King Street, South Carolina. Yes, sir. Yes. May 21st. Come on down. Come on down. Yeah. May 21st. And... Also, I want to thank my brother. He's the one who put all this production together. Kenny, I thank you. I want to thank... <laughs> I know you was going to do that because you know what I was going to say next. You yep. know, Master. <laughs> yep. KJ Multimedia. All this you see, that's who that is. That's my brother. You need videos. You need a show put together like this. You need pictures. You need that stuff? Hey, hit my brother up. He's good at what he do. Y'all want to buy a house? Him and his wife are realtors, too. They'll sell your house. <laughs> They'll help you sell your house to somebody else. <sighs> but see that all-around guy who stand, I stand on his shoulders, and I appreciate him for that. Mm. <laughs> Can I ask one question? Yes, sir. Can you can you download a cassette to CD to put it on CD? Mm, I yep. got a lot of good cassettes, but I can't get them onto CD. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh let me let me get back with you on that. I just have to check some things out first to make sure that I can. Okay. But I'm pretty sure I can. But Okay. okay All right. We'll give him a call. Okay. We'll call and let me know. Will do. That's my that's my brother. That's Kenny. He could do anything. <laughs> that's what that's, that's what you just said. Yeah. That's the reason why I asked. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> She <laughs> could do anything. <laughs> yes, she could do anything. I believe in him. With God's help. <laughs> yes, that's why I yes, said yes. that, because I know that's how you operate. Definitely. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Well, Wonderful. thank you guys so much. Um, Donald, don't hang up. Dr. Gibson, don't leave. We're going to close out, and we'll meet you guys in the green room. Thank you. Thank okay. Mm-hmm. And go ahead and thank everybody on Facebook, Renee. Hey, y'all. Thank y'all for being so patient with us. Y'all know we had some technical difficulties this evening. We're going to have, Donald, you need to buy a new phone. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank you all for joining us and supporting us in all that we do. You know what? I love you guys. Peace out. See you next Thursday. Thank you. See you. Thank you.
Can you see how it is To have adventure games and hang and play with all your friends Because the big big kids know what it is to live The most exciting and inviting life is positive Sapphire 